So we're on the final part now of Learn Basic CSS by building a cafe menu. And as you can see, our cafe menu is coming together quite nicely. We've got coffee and desserts. Um, and we kind of explored the, the basics of CSS. So let's do the sort of the last few challenges. And so we're on step 81 at the moment. So we can change properties of a link when the link has actually been visited using a pseudo selector. So that looks like something like this, where you've got your anchor tag and there's um, is it a colon and then visited. And then we can change the, well, we can actually give it a number of different property names and property values. So we need to change the color of visit our link to be gray when the user has visited it. So we're just gonna do A and then visited uh, tid like that. We open up our selector and we'll do color gray like so and that should pass the test. Cool, so step 82, to change properties of a link when the mouse hovers over them, we can use the hover pseudo selector. So there's a number of different pseudo selectors, um, and this one is hover, and I can actually show you this one, so we want to change the color to be brown, and if I bring this over to the left-hand side a little bit, just scroll down, um, let me get it actually in full view. So visit our website. If I hover over it, you can see the color changes to brown there. Um, let's see if I was to click on this, uh, what if we set the other one, uh, it would change the color to gray because we've then visited that link. If we went back to this page, of course. Cool. So step 83, um, there's another pseudo selector called active. So a active. And in this case, we want to change the color to be white. There we go. And that is active is basically when it's been selected. So when it's been clicked on, it will change to white. Perfect. So step 84, to keep with the same color theme we've already been using, so black and brown, change the color from the link has been visited to black. And then, so being visited will be black. And then brown will be for when it's actually active or actually clicked, which is active, like so. And that should be okay. Cool. So step 85, the menu text camper cafe has different space from the top than the addresses space at the bottom of the menu. This is due to the browser having some default top margin for the H1 element. So to remove that margin, um, we just do margin zero like that. And as you can see there, that, that it, I guess default margin that the browser is adding um, has been removed now. Um, I think we'll probably come to it, but normally you, there's actually a, something called a CSS reset that you'll do to remove any default browser styles, and then you can go in and actually style things custom um, after that. So also to remove some of the vertical space between the H1 element um, and the established 2020, we just change the margin bottom to be 15 pixels. So margin dash bottom will be 15 pixels, like so. There we go, and that brings it up a little bit. Perfect. So step 87, so now the spacing looks good. The space below the address at the bottom of the menu is a little bit bigger than the space at the top of the menu in the H1. Um, so to, to decrease the default margin, address the, the P element. Um, so actually no, we want to create a selector named address and give it a margin bottom of five pixels, oops, five pixels, there we go. And then I assume in the next step we'll be adding that, yeah. So we want to, for this address here, um, there we go, that P, and sorry, you won't be able to see it, um, sort of on my screen here, but that's the now the spacing, and we give this class uh, address, like so. That should push it up a little bit. Is that good? There we go. Okay. So step 89, the menu looks good, but other than that, uh, sort of the, the coffee bean background image, it's mainly just text under coffee heading as an image using the URL uh, of this one and give the image an alt of coffee icon. So just below the H2 here, um, we want to do an image and it's self-closing and the source will be sort of this. 
So there we go. There's our um, image of the, the sort of the coffee cup, and the alt text will be coffee icon, like so. And that's a string. So let's check that. And there we go. So step 90. So the image, as you can see, is now on our sort of, yeah, the left hand side. Um, and obviously it's a block level. Um, so it's not centered horizontally. Um, so images are like inline elements. So to make the image behave like a heading element, sorry, which is actually block level. Um, so this doesn't take up the whole width. It's just taking up how much um, sort of the content is inside, which is just the image here. We can give a dis uh, yeah a value block for display. So display block, and then margin left and margin right um, to center it horizontally. So let's do firstly image, and we then want to do display block like that, and then margin dash left. Let's just do auto and margin dash right auto and I believe oops display there we go and you can see that's now centered um, so it's centered in display block and then we're giving it default margin either side which will push it into the middle um, or sorry auto margin either side so step 91 after, add one last image under the desserts using this URL so I'm just going to grab that and below desserts we'll do another image we give it a source equal to this. Uh, alt is equal to pi icon, and it's closing or self-closing. So now we can see our desserts image, and because we're targeting the IMG, um, where is it in our CSS? If I go over here, display block margin left and right to both auto. You can see that style has also been applied, so it's in the center. So that's great. Cool, and step 92, it would be nice if the vertical space between the H2 elements and their associated icons was a bit smaller. So the H2 elements have a default top and bottom margin space. So you could change the bottom margin of the H2 elements to say, you know, zero or another number. But the another easier way um, they're suggesting is to add a negative margin top to the image and that will bring it up as well. So let's just do margin top and what you can do is a minus 25 pixels and then that will bring it up 25 pixels um, it's sort of effectively eating into the the default margin that's on the h2 here um, probably wouldn't advise that normally you kind of would actually sort of go top to bottom um, and as i said earlier you can do a css reset but yeah this is certainly one way to move content let's say up the page um, or you know make use of of negative values in css so let's check that and there we go all good so yeah that's perfect um, that's all for this section of learn CSS um, by building a cafe menu um, hope it was helpful thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next series thank you very much